Here is the bed of the printer. This is where your objects are actually built. This moves in the Y axis. Underneath the bed, you can see the belt that actually pulls the bed back and forth and wraps around our Y axis motor. The belt is held on to the two rod ends using this tensioner and just a zip tie on this end. The tensioner lets us tighten the belt by tightening the screws on the outside edge. You need two of the short, smooth rods, both of the Y-axis rod ends, which are the same shape but have different holes, the shorter of the GT2 belts, a belt tensioner, zip ties, two M3 22mm screws, the print bed, and four plastite screws. The smooth rods are positioned horizontally when you attach the rod ends, so I wanted to see how easily this actually slid on there. So I just took it barehanded and pushed it in place and found it was really simple. So you don't need to worry about priming these openings unless yours seem really snug. Mine, however, did not need primed. This is in contrast to how extensively I primed the other rod ends that went into the base of the printer. You should have two smooth rods left at this point. Take one and feed it through the set of two bearings on the left. It should slide in easily, however, if yours does not go in easy, undo these screws a tiny bit and that'll allow the bearings to wiggle a little so that you can get them lined up. Take the other one and feed it through the opposite side. Now I will do an alignment check later, but this is all we need to do for now. You can easily identify the front rod end because there's two little slits where you feed the belt later. Stand it so that the flat edge is on top, you'll see two screw holes, that's where you'll actually attach the print bed. Go ahead and press it onto those smooth rods. You most likely will have to alternate pushing each rod a little bit at a time until it's fully seated into the piece. Before I attach the back rod end, I'm actually going to loosen all the screws on the bearing clamps. So I'll allow the rods to flex a little bit, that way it's easier for me to line up the back rod end. I'm only loosening each screw about a half a turn, and it really doesn't take much more than that. Take the back rod end, and you should be able to identify it because it has two holes here, unlike the two slits on the front. Stand it up so that the screw holes are on top, and press it into the smooth rods. As you just saw, I did loosen all the bearing clamp screws. Then I attached the back rod end. Now I have this great glide. Very little force and the piece slides the whole distance. But here's the tricky part. I need to retighten those screws so that I don't lose that glide. I do this by tightening them evenly. Get them to all feel the same level of snugness. Now this gets tricky. You may over tighten one, so you have to keep checking. Get a good feel for that glide and try to match it as you tighten the screws. This step ensures the alignment of your bearings. So I tightened all the screws so they feel the same, and I still have that nice smooth glide. If you tighten them and it doesn't glide as smooth, make a little adjustment and try again. Unlike the previous belt, I'm going to attach the tensioner first. This time, there's a lot more space to tighten the tensioner, so I don't need to fight for every inch like I did in the previous belt. So make sure you point the feet towards the belt, feed the belt through the top slit, and out again through the bottom. Don't need a lot of overhang, just enough to get the zip tie in place. And again, remember that you want those teeth to mesh together whenever you put that zip tie on there. It doesn't matter as much where the block of the zip tie is, but you do want to have it on the top side so it doesn't drag on the bed. So don't worry so much about whether it's on the side that's short or long. Just make sure that it's up top. So as you can see, I have the belt positioned so that the long side is on my right hand side and the block is going to finish on the top. Up close, you can see the teeth mesh together, the zip tie pinches the belt just a bit, and the block is on top when the long side is on the right. It doesn't matter if the block is on the left or the right hand side of this belt, but it does matter that it's on top. Give the belt a tug and make sure there's not pulling through the zip tie. If everything looks good, you can clip away the zip tie excess. Take your M3 22mm screws and feed it through the back rod end. Then take that tensioner, position it so that the longer side is on your right and just get the screws started into the tensioner. Give it a tug, make sure it's holding on to those screws. And take special notice that zip tie is on the top of the belt. So now it's time to feed the belt through the pulleys. First I'm going to go around the toothed pulley. So the teeth of the belt wrap right into that toothed pulley. Then I go around the idler pulley and I find it's best to just feed the end of the belt through. Now's a good time to check that the belt is on the inside of those rims of both the pulleys. Feed it out through the right hand slit, and then back through the left hand slit. Pull away all the slack that you can. Again, it doesn't matter if the block of the zip tie is on the right or left hand side, just that it's on top. So I'm going to get my zip tie started, pull the slack, and then tighten it all the way.
Up close, you can see the zip tie is as close to the rod end as possible, the teeth of the belt mesh together, the block of the zip tie is on top, and the zip tie pinches the belt just a bit. This is a tough piece to tighten, so you may need to use a set of pliers. So even though I haven't tightened the tensioner, this is actually a pretty tight belt, so I feel pretty good about the zip tie, so I'm going to clip away the excess. I want to tighten the tensioner a little bit, but if I over tighten it, the rod ends will be pulled askew and the print bed won't line up. I just want to make sure the belt is firm so I can check that it moves smoothly. Pushing on the belt, I can tell they're very firm. I also can see that the teeth of my slacks still line up, so as I tightened it, it didn't pull the belt through the zip ties, so I know the zip ties are good. I don't get much guitar twang like I did on the other belt, simply because the distance is so short here. I do want to check that everything glides smoothly. It won't slide the way it did before because now we're spinning the motor, but everything should still move smoothly, it shouldn't hit any rough patches, you should also be able to hit this end stop when you pull the bars all the way. I noticed that my slack doesn't actually interfere with anything. You can see the longer slack slides right in there. The shorter slack doesn't hit anything either. I prefer not to clip belt slack whenever I can avoid it. I like to have that extra length in case I ever need to reset this belt. However, you may need to clip this belt slack if yours is interfering with anything. So now it's time to attach the bed, but it's very common that the four corners don't line up. This happens because the belt kind of pulls the rod ends a little askew, so just push them together, square everything up, and the bed will line up much easier. Lay it in place, and then put a plastate screw into each of the four corners. I recommend putting the first two screws in diagonally to help square things up. I actually had a little bit of trouble getting my last screw in place, so I did have to flex that rod end just a tiny bit. Now with the bed in place to square everything up, you can tighten the tensioner screws as much as you want. I always hold the belt with one finger just to see how firm it is, and tighten the screws until it feels right. Once the belt feels tight, give the bed a push all the way to the end and all the way back. You should actually hear a click of the end stop when you bring it all the way back. If everything looks good, you're ready to move on. 